Hello friends welcome back this is Amit from Magnet and today we are going to create this railway yard scene inside Unreal Engine 5.3. So first take a look what we are going to create today. So before we start, if you are new to this channel, I recommend you to check my videos and if you find those videos useful, please do subscribe this channel and turn the notification on. And here I like to shout out for all those people who has already joined me as a member. So if you really want to support me, you can also join me as a member. I open my Unreal Engine from here, just click on this launch button and then I choose this games option here and also I choose this third person template and here I click on this starter content and then I name my project as tutorial and I click on this create button here. So after open, first you go to this file, then you go to this new level and we create an empty level here. Just click on this create button here. Then we set up our lighting very quickly. For this, we go to this window. Then we go to this environment light mixer. Then we click on this create skylight, create atmospheric light, create sky atmosphere, create volumetric cloud and this create height fog. 
and then we go down here and make our fog to volumetric we just tick on this volumetric fog then we close this window and after that we need our landscape so for this we go to the select mode button then we go to this landscape and make sure that we hit on this enable edit layers just tick over here and we don't need to change anything just click on this create button here and it will create a nice landscape for us now we go back to our main selection mode okay so now first we're going to make a small lake for our scene so for this i'm using the water body plugin for unreal engine in order to enable the plugin then we go to this plugins and here you have to search for water so you just uh, click on this search bar and then type and you will find this water plugin just tick over here and just click on this yes and also tick on this click yes and then we have to restart our engine so just click on this restart now so before we restart we have to save our level so we just click on this save selected then we have to name our level as tutorial then we click on this save button and after restart if you find this kind of error just go to the end of this error and click on this add entry to default engine dot ini just click over here then we just click on this clear and close this one and also close this and go to this content drawer and here you will find our level which is the tutorial level just double click to open this one so here is our level okay and now we're going to put our water body here so for this we go to this option here and we click on this place actor panel and now we have to uh, search for our water body so we go to this uh, place actor search bar here and type water and here you will find uh, so many water systems so we're going to use this water body lake just click and drag and drop to our level here and after compile the shader you will find something like this so first we're going to make our lake a little bit uh, different looking so you will find this kind of spline points for our lake so maybe we can uh, add another spline point here so just click over here and then click on this add spline point here okay and then if you drag any axis you, you can easily deform your lake structure here okay just like that and in order to get the actual size reference maybe we can put a character over here so we go to our content drawer here go to these characters then we go to this mannequins and then mesh and here is the mannequin so just put it over here so you can see that now you can understand uh, the real size of our leg and now we are going to set up our leg wave settings here so maybe we can uh, close our actor panel here and then we select our water body like this and make sure that you select the water body lake from here and also go to this details panel make sure that you select this one that is the water body lake instance then we go down here that is this web source so maybe you can see something like that web source under this details panel and then we're going to expand this one and also water wave assets expand this one and here you will find this option here just double click to open this one and maybe it looks something like that so just expand this one and also expand this wave length amplitude direction and the stiffness okay so first we go to this wave length so maybe i put uh, these values over here and maybe we decrease this minimum wave length value to maybe 10 here and the maximum wave length value may be 20 here okay so you can see that uh, it is very noisy here so maybe we can increase this value to maybe 50 and you can see that uh, this looks something like that but don't worry we go to this amplitude and we decrease this value to maybe 1 and also this max amplitude we decrease this value to maybe in and now you can see that you can get a very high frequency noise here so maybe this is too much so maybe we can also increase the value little bit here 
so we go to this wavelength and maybe we change the max wavelength to maybe 100 here and the minimum wavelength we maybe change it to 20. the frequency of the wave is look nice and then we go to this amplitude fall off we can also increase this value to maybe 100 so if i put this value to 100 let's see what it looks something like that so you can see the wave is uh, comes from this uh, left side to right side so now we can also adjust the direction so for this we go to this direction and we change this direction value to something like that so maybe the air direction from the right side to left side if it is then you can also set uh, your direction like this okay just like that so now you can get a nice wave of your lake over here okay so once you're satisfied with this wave you can just save this value from here and then we're going to change the color of the uh, lake also so we select our water body again and then we go down until we find this rendering option and under this rendering tab we will find this water material just double click to open this one and here you can get so many properties of your water material so first we go down here that is this global vector parameters value and inside this you will get this absorption value so you just double click to open this one or single click to open this one and maybe we can make a flat color or maybe a white color water here so maybe we can uh, go to this white color to this uh, color wheel here and we just click on this ok and now you will get uh, this kind of uh, neutral color to your water so if you want you can make your water something like that uh, i think uh, this look nice uh, for this lake so i am uh, use this uh, color here but you can also use different color if you want okay so this is how you can make uh, this kind of lake over here and now we going to put our railway line here so for this i'm using a rail line model from the sketchfab so i also show you that how you can download the rail track so here is the model that i'm going to use so in order to download this just go down and you will find this download 3d model and here is the credit so if you use this model you have to credit uh, the creator of this and he is the creator so many thanks to the creator also and we download this fbx format so just click on this download button here and inside the folder you will find the source folder so here is the fbx file and also uh, outside this source folder you will find this texture folder so it contains all the textures of this model so we're going to import all of this into our unreal engine so first you go to our unreal engine here and go to the content and for the fbx model i'm going to create a new folder to make things organized so you name this as fbx and inside this folder we're going to create a, another subfolder we name this as rail track and inside this folder we're going to import our railway track so here is this railway track and first i go to the source and just drag and drop over here and you will see this kind of menu bar here so if you want to make this nanite just click on this build a nanite and then click here that is the import all and if you get this kind of error just ignore it and close this so here you can see the material so the material slot is empty because we have to put our materials also so here is all this texture file so there's also drag and drop this folder over here and we close this one so these are the textures so first we're going to outside this folder and open this material and now we're going to put the texture over here so first we delete this default texture here and then i go to this texture folder so first we're going to import this base color over here and then i connect it to this base color and if i make a room here so you can see properly that I connected to this base color here. Then I go to this normal map, connect it to this normal here and also go to this road modular roughness. So I just put it over here and put it to this roughness here. And here also this uh, specular. So it just bring it over here and connect it to this specular here. And let's see if we miss something. Yes, the metallic. So just put it over here 
and connect it to the metallic okay then we just click on this apply and we save our material then we close this one so here is our railway track so if i put it over here you can see that uh, this is the railway track it look very nice and now we're going to use the spline system to make this railway track so maybe we delete this one from here and we go to our landscape mode again and now we go to this manage tab and you will find this spline option here just click over here then here you will find this layer option just right click and click on this create to make another layer and then again we just right click over here and click on this reserve for splines and just click on this yes and maybe you can also rename it so maybe we rename this as a railway track and now in order to put the spline into our landscape maybe we can start from here so maybe we can start uh, from here here so we just press and hold the control key and just click over here to make this spline point and then hold the control key and just click like that okay and if you uh, accidentally uh, deselect your last spline point don't worry just click again and you will select your spline point and then also we move uh, our camera over here and then again press and hold the control key and just click and then again we press and hold the control key just click like that and you can see that we deselect our last spline point so maybe again we select our spline point and make a spline uh, here select our last spline point and just extend our spline okay so just like that and now you can see that uh, this looks something like that or maybe we can extend it uh, here also so we select our last uh, this spline point and extend it like that so you can also extend it like that so now we're going to put our railway line model to replace this kind of spline so in order to do that we select any of the spline point from here and when we select this spline point you go to this details panel and first you will see that the control point and the segments just click on the segments to select all of these spline points like that then we go down and inside this landscape spline meshes you will find this spline meshes and here you can find the zero array elements and in order to add the array just click on this plus switch and then we find this index option just expand this one and here you will find this mesh slot so here is our mesh just click and drag and drop to this mesh slot here okay now you can see that our railway track looks something like that uh, but uh, this is not that we want so we're going to change some settings so first we go little down and you will find this center adjust we need to put our uh, railway track little higher so we go to this option here maybe we change this to 50 here so you can see that if you put 50 you will see uh, something like that but if you want uh, this railway track little bit more higher we can maybe change it to 100 okay so now you can see that this look nice but one thing that if we go over here you can see our mannequin here and in compared to this mannequin our railway track is a little bit too much big so we also going to change the scale size so again we select this spline point and now we go to the top and instead of selecting the segments we select in this control point okay and when you click on this control point you will get uh, this kind of uh, parameters here so just we go to this half with parameters and the default value is 1000 we're going to change it to maybe 150 and it will take little time and you can see that this look amazing and now if we put our mannequin over here so maybe we again we go to our selection mode and now if we go to this mannequin and place our mannequin here you can see that uh, maybe this size uh, look identical to the actual real world scale or if you want to rotate our mannequin just like that and maybe we put over here and just like that and you can see that maybe the scale is nice to almost six feet okay just like that so i think this scale is nice okay so you can easily check the scale if you want 
and now if you want to change the position you can also do that so just go to this uh, landscape mode again and then maybe we can choose any spline point so maybe we choose this spline point here and make sure that if you not find this gizmo make sure that you select this gizmo option here and now if we change this position you can easily change this okay so maybe we can select this spline point and maybe we change this value just like that or maybe we can go to this spline point and also change this position okay so you can make a nice uh, zigzag railway track or you can do one thing that you can just rotate it to make it more straight line okay so you can see that very easily you can do these things so again we go back to our selection mode okay so now we're going to put our landscape material so for this i'm going to use some quick cell materials so we go to this content drawer and select this content folder then we right click and click to add quick cell content just click over here and for this landscape material we go to the surfaces folder so maybe we're going to use this one just click over here and you can see that uh, this uh, look nice ground material and here from you can also choose the quality so i recommend you to download this highest quality but for this tutorial i'm going to use this medium quality because i'm also going to screen record my uh, entire video so i'm using this medium quality but if you use you can use this highest quality here so just select this medium quality and click on this download button here and after download we click on this add button here and then I close this quick cell bridge and here is this material. So I'm going to use this material as a landscape material. So we select our landscape. Then we go to its details panel and go down and here you will find this landscape material slot. Just drag and drop over here. And you can see that this looks something like that, but the repetition is too much. So we're going to decrease the styling repetition. In order to do that, just double click to open this material here and here you will find this styling offset option just activate it by clicking over here then expand it and we're going to decrease the tiling scale to maybe 0.2 by 0.2 and now we save this one and here you will find this kind of nice material here so now we're going to put the rocks over this railway track so for this i'm using some quick cell mega scan content i right click and go to this add quick cell content and I have already downloaded some uh, small rocks. So here it is. And I'll also give the link in the description so you can easily get those rocks. So maybe we use this one, this, this one, and maybe this one, and also this one. So I'm using these four types of rock, but you can use uh, different rocks if you want. Then I just click on this download button to download these assets. And after download, I click on this add button. And here is all these assets. So if I go to this Megascan folder, then go to this 3D assets folder. And if I put a filter for the static mesh, we can see all these rocks together. And if you don't have this filter, just go to this three line option and just tick on whatever filter you want. So in this case, I'm using the static mesh filter. So just tick here and this filter is appeared here. And now I'm going to use this four rock as a railway track rocks. So in order to put them, I using the foliage system. So I go to this selection mode, then I go to this foliage and here I select all these four rocks. So I shift click to select all of this. And before I add this, I make this as a nanite. So I just right click and click on this enable nanite for four meshes and then it will convert it to nanite mesh. And now I'm just drag and drop over this foliage section. Okay, then uh, before we paint and uh, make sure that I deselect the static mesh and also this BSP because if we select the static mesh and if I paint here, you can see that our rocks also painted over the static mesh and we don't want this one. So I just uh, delete all of this. And if we paint now, you can see that uh, those are not painted over the static mesh. 
okay so this why we deselect the static mesh option here and also we select all of these three and make sure that the paint density is one here and also we go down and here you can see that the density per 1 keu we can change it to as this maximum value to maybe 10,000 here and also go to the scaling section we set the minimum scale to maybe 0 0.5 and the maximum uh, set to the default number that is 1 and then maybe let's paint here and now you can see that uh, this look not that good because some of the rock are bigger in size so let's find maybe this one is uh, bigger in size so if we go over here and you can see uh, the approx size here it says this 26 into 22 into 14 and here the approx size is 13 into 9 into 6 so maybe for this rock here only select this rock here and we change its uh, scale value to maybe 0 0.5 by 0 0.2 here and now if we paint here and now you can see that this look nice okay so now we're going to paint it all over this railway track okay so now you can see that uh, this look really amazing and now if we accidentally paint some of the rocks over here which is very dense so we can also delete uh, some of this so maybe we select all of this over here and here you can see that erase density so if we make this value zero and if you delete this and in order to delete just press and hold the shift key and just click and it will delete just like that but if we don't want to delete it completely but uh, the sum of the rocks and here in this erase density we make it as maybe 0.5 here and now if we press and hold the shift key and delete and you can see that we only delete some of the particles but not the all particles maybe in this case the rocks so it will be a nice implementation uh, in order to make those uh, foliar system so you can see that we can delete some of the particles not the whole particle over here okay now we are going to use some assets to block out this area for that i am using some mega scan assets so maybe i am going to use this tundra assets for the block out so maybe we go over here and use this one this one and this one so i am also gave the link in the description so you can easily get those assets and also this one here and then i'm just hit on this download button here and once downloaded just click on this add button and here you can find all these assets and now i'm going to use some big assets block out this area so for this i'm going to use this one so you can see that uh, this is pretty much big enough to block out this area so i'm using these assets here and then i'm going to duplicate it and in order to duplicate just press and hold the alt key and just drag any axis to duplicate this one okay and now i'm going to use some of the trees and also the distance mountain so for this i'm using some epic game marketplace content for the tree model i'm using these uh, assets and i'm also give the link in the description and in order to add this just click on this add to project then search for your project and here it is tutorial and just click on this add to project and for the background i'm using this one and maybe this assets is not compatible with your current 5.3 version and if you see this kind of issue you just click on the show all projects then you go down and you will find your uh, project here and but you will get this uh, warning so just go to this select version into this drop down list select this maximum available version here which is the 5.0 early access just click over here and click on this add to project and i'm also going to use this mega scan tree assets which is called the european black elder so once you add those assets first we go to this uh, photorealistic background folder here and let's disable this static mesh filter and now we go to these meshes and then we go to this modular winter 
and here you will find uh, these assets so let's see what we're going to use here maybe we use this one here so we just click drag and drop over here and you can see that those assets are pretty much big so we go to the very top here and then we place this mountain over here okay just like that so you can also use different one if you want and now we're going to put the trees so for this we go to this stf folder and inside this folder just double click to open and then also we select the static mesh filter and here all these trees here so we're going to use uh, these three trees uh, here so or you can also use different ones so maybe we use these five trees over here and before we do that maybe we can change these assets as a nanite mesh and then we go to the selection mode and go to this foliage section and here we add this five tree over here just drag and drop over here and then we going to deselect all of this here and only select those trees and now we go over here there's a paint density maybe we leave it as one and we go down here and here we can change it as maybe 10 for now and also we disable this align to normal and now we're going to start painting so maybe 10 will be so much dense so maybe we can delete this one and decrease the density from here so maybe we set it to 5 okay and then we're going to paint here okay so this look nice and now we're going to paint some trees over these cliffs so in order to do that we going to the top here and also select these static meshes okay and now if we paint here you can see that we can easily paint over these cliffs okay and also we're going to put some uh, trees here also so maybe we increase our brush size from here to maybe uh, maybe 500 and now we're going to start painting and then also we're going to paint over these mountains also so for this we're going to increase our brush size again and now we're going to paint okay so if you face this kind of lagging you can do one thing that we go to this uh, settings tab then we go to this engine scalability settings and set it to high okay so now we're going to put other trees over here so for this i'm going to use this black elder uh, trees here so this is the black elder tree and i'm going to uh, select this static mesh filter here and i'm going to use some of the trees from here so maybe i use this one and i put it over here okay and then also maybe i use this one i put this one over here and also use this one over here okay and here also we're going to put uh, some of the trees so again we go to this foliage section and we select uh, those trees here and maybe we decrease the density a little bit more so maybe two here and also decrease the brush size to maybe 50 and now we going to start painting or maybe we go to this lit option and make it unlit and now we can easily paint those trees over here or maybe we increase the scale a little bit more and now go to this lit mode here and back to the selection mode and now we're going to put those trees also here okay and maybe we're going to put some tundra assets here so let's do that 
so for this again we go to this mega scan folder and select the static mesh filter and here we already uh, put some of these assets here so maybe we use this one over here and we decrease its scale and we rotate this one maybe put it that way and also we duplicate it here place it over here and also we duplicate this tree over here then we place it here and also we rotate this okay to make it little different and maybe we can also duplicate this tree and put it here maybe we can decrease its scale okay so now maybe the right time to put a camera into our scene so for this we go to this option and go to the cinematic and create a cine camera actor okay and then we go to this outliner section and go to the cine camera actor right click and click on this snap object to view to get this proper view here and then also we go to this perspective and select this cine camera actor okay so here is our camera and also we're going to change some settings to the camera but before that we create a level sequence for us so we go to this sequence option and click on this add level sequence and maybe we also name this as tutorial sequence and then we save this so here it is maybe we delete this content browser here and now we are going to bring our camera over this sequence so we go to the search bar and type for cine it is a cine camera actor just drag and drop over here and now we select our camera from here and also we go to its details panel then we go down inside this film back we're going to change this presets to 16 is to 9 dslr and go to its current focal length here and we change this to maybe 15 for now to make a nice wide angle lens here and also we're going to change our sun position so we press and hold the ctrl and l and then we change our sun position here okay and now we can also change some exposure settings but before we do that we go to our fox settings first so we go to this uh, outliner section and search for fog and here is the exponential height fog first we go to this fog density maybe we decrease it little bit to get a nice uh, view to the distance and also we go to this camera then we go down here inside this lens section first we go to this bloom and we change this method from standard to convolution here and then also we go to this exposure here we change this metering mode to manual and then we go to this exposure compensation activate it and then we maybe we change this to 10 and you will get nice exposure to our scene here or maybe 11 will be nice okay or you can also do one thing that you can set it as 10 and then we go over here that's the current aperture we can decrease this aperture to make the lens little bit brighter here okay now you can get nice result over here okay or maybe we can increase the fog density little bit more go to this exponential height fog and then we go at the top increase the fog density little bit and also we go here that is the fog height fall off we can increase it little bit now we're going to put some ground vegetations also so for this we again go to our content drawer here or maybe we can dock our content drawer uh, somewhere in this side of the sequence okay so now in case of we have to go to our content drawer we can just click over here and here is our content drawer and now again we go to this uh, black elder folder and select this filter called the static mesh so here is the static mesh filter and now we're going to select some of these ground vegetations so for this we go to our foliage section again 
and we deselect all of this tree here and we select uh, some of these uh, brown vegetations here so maybe use this one so put it over here and then we select this one and go down and maybe we uh, disable this align to normal here and also we go to this painting option and we decrease this density to maybe 40 and now we start painting maybe we select this unlit version to make it little quick okay just like that and now again we go back to our lead mode here and then we go to the selection mode and now you can see that this look nice so now maybe we going to put uh, other assets here so for this we go to this mega scan folder and go to this 3d assets and select this static mesh filter and now here we will get uh, some of these nice assets so maybe use this one and we go to its scale and we decrease the scale little bit to maybe 0.2 here and then we place it over here okay just like that maybe we change our lighting setup here or we also change our cloud settings so we go to the search bar and search for volumetric cloud here and then we go to this layer bottom altitude we can decrease this value or maybe we increase this value and also we increase this value to maybe 50 okay and then you will get different kind of uh, cloud here and also maybe we can decrease this value to maybe 50 here or maybe we decrease down this value to get less cloud here and then we change our light position okay so now we're going to add some other assets uh, for this railway line so i'm using some mega scan assets for another railway line here and i'm using this one this one and this one here and then i'm go over here and just click on this download and after download i click on this add button and then i go to this mega scan folder go to the 3d assets and here is this assets so maybe i'm using this extra line over here here maybe so i put these things over here then also we rotate it and then also duplicate it but before i do that i check this option here to get this real gizmo for these assets and then i duplicate it or maybe i disable the snapping and then i duplicate it okay just like that or uh, maybe we can select all of these uh, line assets here and I put it over here or also we rotate this then maybe I duplicate it one more time and at the end I'm using this buffer here okay just like that and uh, now we're going to use some other external assets uh, like the railway tank as well as a railway engine and some of the assets and I'm also download those assets from the sketch fab so I'm going to use this house or you can say this cabin and in order to download just go to here and then you have to uh, give this credit to this creator here just copy this credit and put it into your video description and then just click over this download button and I have also used this nice looking engine and I'm also download this one and this one also and this nice looking train station also and this iron platform also but this is a paid model so if you want you can also use it or otherwise if you don't want you can not use it 
and finally i am using this fence here so here is all this model and i'm going to use it one by one so first i'm going to use this engine model which is the western specific so i extract it and just double click to open and here is the source and this is the fbx file so i'm going to put it uh, this uh, file into this fbx folder so first we double click to open this folder and then we make a new folder and we name this as the engine and then i double click to open this folder and drag this uh, engine model over here and then also i click on this built-in nanite and click on this import all and then we clear these warnings and just close this panel okay so here you can see that uh, there are so many different components so we have to merge all this component into a single object so in order to do that first we select this first one and this last one over here and then we just drag and drop into our viewport here and then we go to this tools option and here you will find this merge actors just click over here and here we don't need to change anything just click over here that is the replace source actor just click over here and click on this merge actors we have to save this merge actor so we use the same folder here and maybe we name this as the engine and we save it from here and then we just close this one here you can see that you can see it because it is very small here so we going to increase its scale and here you can see this engine model and after selecting this engine model go to its details panel and go to the scale we're going to change this maybe 5 here or maybe 100 okay so here it is and you can see that first we're going to uh, place over this railway line so we can easily get uh, the actual size so maybe we place it over here and we go underneath this uh, engine and here is the this uh, wheels so we're going to match the wheels uh, on this railway track so we can get this actual size okay so now maybe we place our engine over here So you can put uh, the engine wherever you want uh, for the sake of this tutorial maybe i put this engine over here or maybe here and maybe i use the unlit mode to make it a little smoother here okay so this look nice and now go to the lit mode again okay so now we going to texture this train okay so you can see that uh, there are so many materials here so we have to put the texture into all this material uh, to get a nice result here so first we going to bring all these texture file so here is the texture file which is uh, comes with the download and just bring this texture folder into this so here is all these textures and it's placed inside this texture folder so now we have to do that we manually put all the texture into is all of this material so first maybe we open this material over here so it's named that boggy back okay so first we delete this one and then we go inside this texture folder and here you will get all this texture for this boggy back okay so just uh, bring this base color texture here and just link with this base color here and also go to this metallic then we go to this metallic here and also go to this ambient occlusion then go to this ambient occlusion over here and also place it over here maybe we make a little room here then we'll get this roughness and here it is and for the roughness we have to do one thing that we also make a scalar parameter to change the value of the roughness of this material so for this maybe we first we put a multiply node here so press m and click here to get this multiply node and then we connect this one to this a and also we need a scalar parameter so we press and hold the s key and click over here to get this scalar parameter and we name this as roughness value or 
and here you will find uh, this roughness value here which is a uh, default zero maybe we put it as five here and then we connect it over here and also connect it to this roughness okay and then we just click on this apply and save it okay then we close this one and now if we go over here that is the boggy back and you will see that the texture is applied here nicely okay so there are so many materials here you can see that there are this kind of materials over here so i'm just uh, show you the first one and i believe that you can also do uh, the same thing to the rest of this material over here okay and all the textures are present inside this texture folder so don't worry just go through and you will find all this texture inside this texture folder okay so now you can see that uh, i do the same process over and over again for all this material and for this glass material i do one change here so just double click to open this one so you select this glass material here and then you come to this details panel and here under this material section you will find this blending mode i change this to as a translucent but in default you will see it set to the opaque but if you set it to opaque you cannot access this opacity channel and this opacity map uh, connect with this opacity channel but in order to activate this one you just go over here after selecting this material inside this uh, blending mode you have to change this to translucent so translucent for any translucent material like this glass here and when you change this to translucent you will see that the opacity channel is open for work okay so this is the only change that i uh, do for the glass material and everything is remains same just click on this apply and save this one just close this one and now you can see that uh, this look really amazing okay so this is how you can import this railway engine model and also do all this texturing okay so now we're going to put other assets here so maybe we come over here and now we're going to put other assets so i do the same uh, process to bring other assets so maybe go to this tank model and here you can see that this is the tank model and if i put this model over here and you can see that and this model uh, default size is very high so we're going to decrease the scale so maybe we can decrease it to maybe 0 0.2 i mean 0 0.02 and now it's still very big so maybe we can also decrease its scale to maybe 0 0.001 okay so now it is uh, very small now so we're going to change this rotation and then we going to increase its scale so maybe we come over here and place it 5 here or maybe we okay 0 0.028 will be fit nice here okay so this look nice and also you can do one thing that we can duplicate this model here and maybe we place it over here so we go here and we can just make it abandoned uh, railway boggy here and here is the fencing also so i use the same technique to merge all these component into a single object like the engine here so if you go to inside this fencing folder you will get uh, so much of component here so i select all of this component and merge to into a single fence model here so you can also make this easily so we just put it this fencing model over here and then also we have this railway station model here so here i put my railway station into my original video so you can put it over here or you can put this railway station anywhere else so maybe i put it over here and also i use this iron of uh, platform so i go over here and here is this iron platform and first i put this iron platform over here
and this is an optional if you want to buy this model you can easily use this model but if you don't want to buy you can just uh, make this scene without using this iron uh, platform model if you want and then i put this platform house over this iron platform so maybe i put it over here okay just like that and then also i put some of the rock over here so i go to this mega scan folder go to this 3d assets and also select this static mesh filter and here we'll get some of these tundra rocks so we're going to use those rocks maybe i go to unlit mode okay so now go back to the lit mode here and you will see that this look nice okay so press g to hide all of these uh, guide layers and then if we go over here you can see that this look amazing okay so eventually our scene looks nice and now we're going to put some ground assets okay so for this i'm going to use some uh, epic game content so for the ground asset i'm using this mega scan forest path okay so after you add the assets you will find uh, this folder here that is the ms forest tube and we're going to use it as the ground assets here so maybe first we're going to uh, go to the foliage section here and then we go to this forest tooth folder and go to the static mesh filter here and maybe first we're going to use some of these falling leaves here so we're going to use this one this one and this one here and maybe also this one and then we're going to make it as a nanite model and then we're going to put it over here so now if we go over here and deselect other or uh, these assets so make sure that you only select uh, those ground assets here and not select the other assets and then we just select all of this and maybe everything look nice and also we decrease our brush size to maybe 100 here okay and then also we deselect the static mesh and now we're going to paint okay so you can see that uh, some of these grasses also so maybe we don't want uh, these grasses now so maybe we going to deselect the grass here so maybe these are the grasses so we deselect the grass only select these falling leaves okay and then we're going to use this uh, rock model also so we select all of these rocks here and then make again we make those as a nanite and then finally we put those uh, sticks also so again we come over here and make those as a nanite stick okay so with this nice details it will look nice and then we go back over here okay so this is the basic design of this kind of scene now we're going to put some other assets to make it more complicated so i'm going to use this one that is the mega scan aquatic and here you can get so many nice uh, water lilies and other small plants and also some of these grasses so i'm going to use this one and also this mega scan concrete barriers construction site volume one and construction site volume two 
okay once you add those assets you will get all these folders here so first we're going to use uh, some of these ground grasses so i'm using this ms aquatic assets so if i just select this static mesh filter and you will get uh, so many grass models here so i'm going to use some of this grass model and then first i go at the top and set this uh, brush uh, size to maybe 50 and then we go down here and after selecting all those grasses here go down here and then also we decrease this density to maybe 50 and this look nice so let's start painting from here or maybe we can increase the density to 100 maybe and then also i set this lead mode to unlit mode to make it little fast okay and then also i'm going to use those assets here so i select both of these and also this one and then i drag and drop over here so go over here and we drag and drop those assets and then also i make them as a nanite too and after that we select all of these and we make sure that we deselect all of these and only we select those three okay just like that and then also we come down here and we increase the density to maybe 500 and now let's paint okay so once we satisfied we go to our lit mode here to visualize how it look like so now you can see that this look amazing and then also we put some of the trees here and there so maybe we go back to our selection mode and then we select this tree or you can use different trees if you want so just put it here and there and it will look nice okay just like that so this is how you can easily design uh, your scene like that and now we're going to put other assets so as we download before the construction uh, volume pack one and here if we go to the static mesh you will get nice assets here so you can use those barrels over here and there if you want and then also we can get uh, this kind of boxes here so you can use those boxes here and there so you can uh, see that if you put uh, different assets it will look nice and also these boxes and some of these barrels over here okay and this container it also look nice so we're going to use this container over here and you can see that and this look really amazing maybe we put it little down to the ground and make little bit of tilt okay just like that and then also we can use this dustbin over here and because uh, this uh, railway tank is uh, placed uh, for a long time so it will probably some of the plants also grow over these tanks so we can also do that so for this we go to our selection uh, foliage mode again and this time we only going to select uh, some of these branches here and then we go to select the static mesh option here and now if we go upward here and we're going to paint so now you can see that some of these branches are painted over this uh, tank here and maybe we can increase the density to maybe 500 okay just like that 
and also we go down here and do the same things over here okay maybe we put some of this over this barrel okay and do the same to here also okay just like that also put some uh, sticks over here and then also we're going to put some elder trees over here also so okay so now you can get the idea and also we going to put some other assets so as you can see we have so many assets here as well as this construction volume 2 pack so here you can also get some of these assets so maybe we put this cable over here and then also we have other assets so maybe we go over this fbx folder and here we downloaded this single box so we're going to use this uh, cabin over here so maybe we can put this cabin over here okay and then also we can put uh, the grasses over here so again we go to this foliage section so you can see that this is all depends on you that how you want to design the basics are same but uh, if you want you can put different assets here and there to make things look nice and then also we duplicate this uh, cargo barrel or cargo container uh, to this area so we just select this cargo uh, container so if we go to this epic mode and you will see how it look like so you can see that this look uh, eventually amazing so now maybe we going to work on this river area okay so we go back to our high scalability settings here to make things little faster so before we do anything you can see that our water looks uh, more dense so maybe we can make it little bit of transparent so for this we select our water body here then we go down to its material settings here it is under this rendering tab we double click to open this one and then we go down here to this initial trophy settings and we change it to maybe increase it to to maybe 0.97 here and you will get more clear water here and then we save this one and close this and you will get nice clear water over here and this water look nice okay so now we are going to put some plants inside this and also we put some rocks here also so for this again we go to this mega scan folder and here we downloaded some rocks and here from we can get uh, some of these assets so maybe we use this one here So now you can get uh, this nice result here and also we're going to use this cargo container over there so maybe we can duplicate this one here and then we place it over here and you can see that i am really struggling with our my computer here uh, but it still run this so i'm very glad and then also you can uh, put uh, some of this and then i duplicate this fence over there okay and now we're going to put some trees over there also so for this again go to this foliage section here and then we select this tree here so maybe we can select all of this and only select this tree here 
and then also we go down and increase the density so we go to this painting tab and increase the density to maybe 100 and now we're going to paint Okay, so maybe we can done a little bit of designing over here. So if we go to our lit mode again, and then we go to our high scalability here, and you will get uh, this kind of nice view here. Okay, so I basically I do some of these uh, small plants to put over there. And also you can do one thing that you can duplicate this tree so maybe we go back to our selection mode and duplicate this uh, big tree here and we can duplicate it over here and also we have some of these assets too so maybe we use this uh, railway wheel here and also we increase its scale like that okay just like that so it can fill the area okay so i think uh, you will get uh, the idea and also we have some of these aquatic plants so maybe we can use those plants here also so maybe again we go to our foliage section here and then we uh, maybe we select all of this from here and then we deselect to make sure that it does not select any of this then we go to this ms aquatic folder and here you will get some of these nice uh, small plants as well as water lilies so maybe we use this water lilies here and put those over here and then we go over here okay and also we have uh, these grasses so we're going to put these grasses also so we deselect uh, these water lilies and if you see that and the grass is not moving uh, with the wind we can easily enable the wind for the grasses so we go to this folder and deselect this static mesh then we go to this 3d plants and here is these grasses and these are the grass materials so we just double click to open this material and go to the search option and type wind and we have to just enable the wind from here and then we save this and then it will take a little time to compile the shader and we close this one and you can see that we have this nice wind effect to the grass okay so far so good and now we going to put some nice fern okay so for the fern assets we going to the mega scan again so i am using this fern as well as those plants so i'm selecting those plants also and then maybe this one and this one also and then i set this to medium quality but i recommend you to set it to high quality for better result and then i'm just click on this download to download all these assets okay once you add those assets you will get uh, this uh, under this mega scan folder under this 3d plants folder you will get uh, those assets so maybe here it is and also this fern assets here so first we're going to use those ferns so we go to this foliage section and then we select all of these ferns and make them also nanite here and then we just put those ferns over here so here are the fern so we select all those ferns and then we just start painting here and you can see that those ferns are look really amazing and as well as we can also enable the wind for this so we go to these materials and type wind to the search bar and just enable the wind here and we close this one and now we're going to put the fern And also we have uh, downloaded other uh, plant assets so maybe we're going to use those so here it is 
So maybe we can use these small plants or small uh, flower here also. So maybe we can use those as well. Okay, so now if we change our light settings here, maybe light position. You can see that this look nice. Okay, and also we have other plants. So maybe we can use those plants. So we again select all of these and deselect this. And then we select only those plants here. And then we going to paint. Okay, so now you can see that this look nice. So we have also downloaded some assets from the Megascan. This is called the concrete barrier. So we are going to use some of these assets also. So here is those. So maybe we put uh, these small pillars here. And finally, I'm going to use these assets. Uh, this is very optional uh, because uh, these assets is quite large. And if you want, you can also use these assets. So I'm going to use this asset uh, to make some extra details to my scene. So if you add these assets, you will get this geometry folder here and go to this assembly. And here you will find these kind of small ground assets here. So maybe we're going to use some of these ground assets over here. So maybe use this one. This is quite big. So I'm going to push it there and also rotate it. So as you can see, uh, these assets look nice, but on the other hand, this asset is quite large in size. So if you want, you can use it. Okay, so this is it and this is how you can put the different assets in different places to make things nicer and you can see that this is not look like my actual video because I took so much time to build my actual video and here I show you that how I actually build the scene and I also show you the basics and maybe you can see that in my actual video I put some fog sheet or fog cuts in the distance mountain or this distance tree and I'm not showing you here because it will take a little bit more time or this tutorial is already a very long tutorial uh, but I show the process in my previous tutorial so if you want you can easily uh, understand that how you can make the fog or volumetric local fog in the distance mountain okay so this is how you can make this kind of scene and I hope that you can easily design this scene because you can see that this area look nice with these nice details uh, but here uh, I am not designing so this area is not look uh, as good as this area so I believe that you can use the same technique to make this area also look nice and now I'm going to uh, make a small video to show you that how it look like with this uh, nice camera animation. So we go to our sequencer and then uh, first we go to this uh, fast frame here and then we make a keyframe to this transform and also make sure that we make a linear uh, transform key. So I just uh, click on this linear here after selecting those keyframes. Then also we go over this default keyframe uh, interpolation method and I change this to linear. And also I make a auto keyframe switch here. Then I go to the very last frame. You can just uh, scrub through time or you can just click over here to go to this end frame here. And then I make a simple camera animation here. And now if you play this one, so if we play, you can see that this look uh, like this kind of nice camera animation here. Okay. And you can also make some of this uh, camera shake uh, blueprint to make a nice camera shake here. So in order to do that, we go to our content drawer here or content browser. And then we go to this content folder and here just right click and go to this blueprint class and go to this all classes and here you can type for shake and here you will find this camera shake base just select this one and here it is so you can name it as a shake and just double click to open this blueprint and here it is 
so first we uh, come over here and change this uh, root shake pattern to parallel noise camera shake pattern then we expand this and go to this timing first and we set the duration to zero zero means it will shake your camera uh, throughout your time frame okay or otherwise you can put uh, your specific time that how much time you want to shake your camera but uh, in general we put the zero then we compile these settings and then we go to our sequencer and here from we go to this camera go to this plus sign and when you make a camera shake blueprint you will get this option here that is a camera shake and inside that you will get this blueprint here and we are going to extend this blueprint from the beginning here and now if we play you can get little bit of camera shake maybe you cannot recognize the shake so I am just change the settings from here first we are going to play this video and also loop this video so you can play repeatedly and from now here we can go to this rotation and we change this uh, rotation amplitude multiplier to maybe 2 here so now you can get a very exaggerated camera shake here that much we don't need so we're going to change the frequency or decrease this frequency to maybe 0.2 and now you will get a very subtle camera uh, shake here okay so this is how you can put camera shake also okay so this is how you can create uh, this kind of scene and in my actual video i put uh, so many cinematic shots in different positions so maybe uh, i can also show you some uh, other techniques so in that way you can make uh, this kind of scene and maybe i can uh, delete all of these uh, keyframes here and maybe i can make a nice cinematic shot uh, for this tank okay so for this maybe i can zoom my camera a little bit here like that and then i go to the very first frame here and make a keyframe and then i go to the last frame here and maybe i can just move my camera over here okay just like that and at the same time maybe we can do one thing that we go to our this camera uh, current focal length which is set to 37 first we go to the very beginning and make a keyframe over here and also go to the last frame and now maybe we can decrease this camera focal length so now if you play you can see that this nice kind of vertigo effects here so you can also do that things okay so maybe we can uh, change the engine scalability to high here okay so it can run smoothly okay so you can also uh, get uh, this kind of nice scene if you want or as well as we can just uh, delete this camera focal length keyframe and you can also make a, another camera animation here or go to this very last frame and maybe we can orbit around this uh, tanker so you will get an another nice camera animation here so because our timeline is very small uh, it's around five seconds long so if you want a 10 seconds long video and your frame rate uh, may be 24 or 23.976 just like that so you can increase your frame uh, to maybe 240 frames to get a nice 10 seconds long video and now you can get this kind of nice camera animation here okay so camera animation is just to put your camera in different places and make a nice shot okay so but you can see in my actual video i made a nice uh, first person view also so here it is So if you want to make these things, uh, you can easily uh, make it by take record your camera. So 
for this i am going to download a character pack uh, for this third person character and which is also free so i'm go to this epic game marketplace to download this so i am using this adventure character pack and if we uh, start play from here so just right click here and go to this play from here and you will get uh, this kind of nice third person character here but we're going to make it as a first person character okay so in order to do that we just uh, go back from this game view and then uh, if you enable the third person template at the beginning of your uh, project as i show you in earlier we going to have this third person folder here and inside this third person folder we go to this blueprint and then we go to this third person blueprint to open this just double click to open this okay so i maximize this window then first you go to this viewport here okay so here is our character and this camera and also you will get this camera boom here so first we're going to delete this camera boom so just go to this camera boom and right click and just delete this camera boom here and now we are going to parent our mesh to with this camera so we just drag our camera out from this uh, mesh and just put it uh, under this mesh so this camera is now connected with our mesh okay and then also we change this socket uh, of this camera so after we selecting this camera follow camera here you will find this sockets option and we are going to link our camera with this character head so we just search for head here and here is the head bone we just uh, lock our camera with this character head okay and now you can see that uh, this camera is moving with the head uh, move here okay and now we are going to reposition our camera over this head uh, but you can see that our camera is moving continuously so we go over here and we uncheck this real time option to pause our camera over here and now we are going to reposition our camera over here okay just like that and also we are going to rotate it and also move it over here okay just like that and then when you satisfied with this position or we can also uh, change the position later on according to our settings so now if you set your camera over here then we come to this option that is the camera option after selecting this follow camera you will find this camera option and you just check on this box that is the use pawn control rotation okay just like that and now if we go to our real time mode here and you can see that our camera is moving with this head nicely and then also we do one thing that we also sync our yaw with this character so for this we go to this bp third person character self option here just select this one then we go to the search bar and type for pawn and inside this pawn option you will find this use controller rotation yo just enable this one from here okay and now you can see that our character looks something like that maybe we can push our camera a little bit so in order to do that uncheck the real time again and maybe we place our camera here like that okay and now compile this one and again check this real time option and now minimize this one and now if we play from here you can see that we have this third person look and also we have this character here so now if you run you can see the character over here and also if you jump you can see that okay uh, but you can see that uh, when we uh, move our character the character is always running uh, but we want to make a walking animation also as well as the running animation when we want and also we bind a key to make the character running like in video game when we press shift it will sprinting so let's do that okay so in order to switch between run and walk uh, first we're going to make a action input so for this we go to this edit then we go to this project settings and here we go down until you find this input here and here we're going to make a action mapping so initially you can see that there is zero uh, option so we go to this plus switch to make this uh, option and here 
we just now uh, expand this and in this action we going to name as run run is this keyboard option we're going to bind a key for run so in general uh, we use shift key in gaming for running so you just click here and press shift and there is a left shift for running okay and now we just close this one from here and here we going to open this third person bp again just double click to open this and then we go to this event graph so here is this event graph and maybe we going to make a little room here so first we go to this character movement okay this option that is the character movement option and here if we go here that is the max walk speed is set to 500 so maybe uh, this is for the running speed and we change this to maybe 200 for now which is the in general walking speed and if you make this 200 now if we compile this one here and then we minimize this and if we start playing from here and here you can see that if we walk you can see that now it's not running it's just walking okay uh, but what about we going to make a key uh, or bind the shift key left shift key. if i press the left shift key you can see that it's not running yet because we have to map the key okay but you can see that if you just uh, only want to make your character only walking you can uh, do this step uh, here and you just make your character walking instead of running okay but we want uh, our character also running when we want so again we go back to our game mode here and again open our character blueprint here and here first we're going to uh, input our action mapping that we just built earlier so we just right click here and type for input action mapping and inside this input you will find this action uh, event that is the run so we just put this over here this is our input action run event okay and now we're going to connect it with this character movement so just click select and drag and drop over here and we also connect with this node called call this set max walk speed and here is the set max walk speed node and now we going to map this action input uh, to this uh, speed so first we going to make this if we press shift key it will begin to run so we set here the run speed to maybe 500 and then we connect it this press event so if we press the shift key it will uh, begin to run and the uh, speed will be 500 and again we are going to duplicate or just copy this so just press c uh, ctrl c to copy and paste here and now if we release the shift key it will begin to walk again and next we have to uh, decrease the speed to 200 which is our walking speed so that's it and if you've done it correctly just uh, go to this compile and just compile this and we close this one from here and now if we begin to play again you can see that here it is so if we uh, just press w for walk and if we press shift and you can see that it start running and if we release uh, shift key it will again walking okay so this is how you can switch between walk and run and this look nice okay and now we are going to change our character here so we already downloaded a character for our third person character so we are going to change the character okay so for this we double click to open this one here and then we select our third person character blueprint here and here under this mesh you have to change this mesh so we go over here and let's see what we have here so we have this third person character so maybe we going to use this one or this one according to your choice so i'm using this one and also if we go to compile this one here and then we minimize this and now if we start playing here you can see that you can easily change the character here okay so now you can see that you can see this third person character okay so this is how you can easily change the third person character as well as you can uh, switch between walk and running 
okay so now i am going to show you that how you can make a cinematic shot by using this so for this we going to need a plugin called the tech recorder so we have to uh, enable the plugin so we back from our third person uh, game mode here then we go to this edit go to this plugins and we type for tech recorder okay so here it is the tick recorder is already ticked uh, here if you not uh, tick just tick here and you have to restart your engine as well as we going to enable our movie render queue for high quality rendering and when you type movie you will find this movie render queue plugin just enable this one and also this one so just click yes and just restart your engine and you have to save uh, all your updates okay so here it is and now we going to change our scalability to low again and now we go to window and go to the cinematic and then we click on this take recorder so here is our take recorder here and now we going to uh, record our third person game mode okay so but before you do that we have to specify the source and in that case our source will be our pawn character so we go to this plus switch then we go to this player okay so whatever the player do the uh, take recorder will record the scene okay so now we go to this game mode here so and before we uh, start playing we just click over here that is to start the record we just click on this red button here and in that way it will give you a uh, three seconds to set up and you can see that you can just also run and you can see your legs or hands also there and then you can just move around and you can get a nice uh, third person view here or first person view here so depending on you so now when you satisfied with your movement just press escape button to escape from this game mode and you can see here that this recording is completed and if you go to this browse you will get uh, this folder and this folder is under the cinematics folder so if you lost you just go to this content then search for this cinematics folder and under this cinematic folder you will get this text and just double click to open and if you have only one take you will find this one folder and if you have multiple takes you will get multiple folders here just double click to open this and inside this folder you will get all these animations that you just uh, do in your third person game mode and here is the sequence so just double click to open this sequence and now if you see that if i go over here And if you play, you can see that your character is uh, moving or walking. So you can easily see that how you do in your game view, uh, it will record exactly the same. But now we going to put our camera over this character. So it will look like a first person view. Okay, so in order to do that, we go over here and first we have to uh, unlock this sequence so initially that you cannot change anything here because this sequence is locked okay so here it is so if we just click over here it will unlock this uh, sequence and now we going to change uh, put our actual camera over this camera okay so here you can see maybe we can uh, just uh, close this take recorder window and here is our cinematic camera okay so here it is our camera we going to bring our camera over this sequence just like that here it is and maybe we can also set up our camera so maybe we can uh, set this camera to maybe uh, 15 millimeter camera lens here and also we're going to decrease the camera aperture here and also we're going to set up some settings so it's set to 16 to 9 dslr that is nice but we go to this length settings and go to this bloom and it's also set it and exposure it also set to 10 and manual so we don't need to change anything here okay but we have to reposition our camera over this camera okay so just like that so first we go to this cine camera actor not this one go to this one then go to this plus and go to this attach okay and we attach it with is our third person character so we go to the third person character and here from we can attach with the bone so we choose the neck here so 
so we type neck and here is the neck uh, underscore zero one and now you can see that uh, our camera is attached with the neck so if you play you can see that this looks something like that so but you can see that our camera view was something like that so we have to reposition our camera so we go to this uh, perspective view and here is our camera so we have to find our character so our character is over here so we have to move our camera to with this character so we select our camera here and then we just reposition our camera over here So and you can see that this camera and this camera so we're going to rotate our camera like that and also we reposition our camera over here and not only you just put our camera uh, with our character face you can also put our camera anywhere else and you will get the nice view so if you play you can see that you can get uh, your camera lock into this position and you can get a nice view so if we go to this perspective and go to the cine camera actor and you can see that this is also nice so if you want <laughs> this kind of shot you can also do that okay so maybe again we can change our camera position so here it is so you can also change if you want a third person view you can also do that so you can see that you can also get a third person view over here and this look nice and maybe i have to do that because i don't know i just think that i have to do this so maybe you can just rotate your camera to this character face here And now if you moving you can see whoa this is a maybe we can go to this cine camera actor and now if we play you can see this character oh my god this character is so angry right now wow and you can get a nice scene with this camera position okay so you can also do that uh, but our goal is to make a real first person view so we again go to this and we set our camera okay so if we go to our cine camera view and now if we play you can see that you can get a nice first person view here and also when you are running you will get your hands into your scene okay and now if we go to this uh, high settings here so you will also get uh, some of nice shadows here so now you can get a nice result here. Okay, so this is how I make this first person view also. But here is the main thing that in order to render this scene, maybe sometime you can render, but you will see that your render is not uh, actual render in your scene and you will get a different uh, render. Okay, so in order to make sure that you're rendering the current camera here, that is this uh, this cine camera actor, first you go to this camera cut and you delete this camera cut here. And then we go to this camera cut again and go to this plus sign and select this cine camera actor. Okay, this is very important. Now you can see that this is the actual camera cut. And now if you render this, you will get this first person view. Otherwise, you will get a different view and which is look very weird. So sometimes people suffer after rendering the whole scene. You can see that uh, you not rendering the correct camera. So before you render, you have to uh, uh, make sure that you set inside this camera cut with your actual camera in this case this is the cine camera actor here so this is it and this is how if we just uh, look over here so this is how you can make uh, this nice first person view with this nice uh, character as well as this walk and run animation together 
okay so this is it and this is how you can build this scene okay so now i'm going to show you that the render setting that i use for my actual video so i have already enabled the movie render queue plugin so just go to window go to the cinematics and go to this movie render queue and now we go to this render and here you have to select your correct sequence so if you are rendering this uh, gameplay so you have to select this bp third person scene 101 so which is the actual sequence but if you want to render the uh, video or cinematics then you have to select your sequence that is the tutorial sequence that we built earlier so now if we select this third person view just uh, go to the unsafe config then first we're going to delete this jpeg sequence because we want our sequence will be exr sequence and then also i'm going to turn on this anti-aliasing and in general i'm using this 32 sample count for this temporal samples and also you check this override anti-aliasing and make sure that you can also use this warm-up frames so just put this warm-up frames here and then go to the settings again go to this camera and i'm use this uh, frame close for the shutter timing then again go to these settings and i use this high resolution settings and also i override this subsurface scattering then i go to this output and here you can specify the output directory and then also you can specify your frame rate so in general i am using this 23.976 frame rate and just click on this accept and then just click on this render local and your exr sequence will be ready and i'm also showing in my previous tutorial that how you can compile all these exr sequence into a video file by using after effect so you can easily check out that okay and here you can see that this look nice and in my actual video i put some uh, local fox sheet into this distance mountain so you can also do that but i'm not going to show it here because this is already a very big tutorial but in my previous tutorial on ocean i already thoroughly show you that how you can uh, make a nice fog sheet for this localized fog so if you want to make you can easily do that and again i am very sorry that i'm not uh, make the whole entire scene as uh, same look as my actual video because you can see that this will take little time uh, but i show you that how i can build entire scene here and also the tricks and tips that i used to build my actual scene and you can see that in this small area i really nicely decorated here but you have to do the same thing for your entire world okay so this is it and uh, this is for today's video and i hope uh, that i go through all the processes that i do for my actual video and i think that you really enjoy this and i also show you so many tips and tricks and also for this third person view or first person view so i really hope that you really enjoy this tutorial so this is for today and we will see in my next video so till then take care and bye bye